How in the world yeah, do we expect on. that New York passed that yeah. bill that if, yeah. if you're a Christian, Lord and mercy, there's no possible way you could agree with. Right. But how in the world do we expect for the glory of God to be in America for our children's uh -huh. sake if the glory of God and the presence of God is not in the church house? Right. But let me tell you, when we call upon the name of the Lord, when we surrender ourselves to the will of the Holy Spirit of God, His presence will be near. You say, well, preacher, I feel like, or you say, maybe you're a pastor out there, you say, I feel like the presence has left. Maybe you feel like the presence has left in your home, in your family, in your church, whatever it may be. I'm telling you, you say, how in the world can I get that presence of God back? Well, I know what the psalmist tells us, that God inhabits the praises of of his people. Where does, what does that mean? That means he lives where the praise right. is. Right. That means if we would get off our blessed assurance every once in a while <laughs> and we would praise the Lord Amen. God Almighty who is worthy to be praised, Amen. then that means his presence would be near. Yeah, right. His pre presence would be nigh. And these people, they had come, Mary and Martha, the, the sisters of Lazarus had come, and we know that Mary was so upset with Jesus, she sat back. When Jesus finally showed up, she was mad about it. Mm -hmm. She must have been like a present-day church member today. <laughs> pray, 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 and all of a sudden we don't get an answer. And when that's the right. answer comes, we say, well, I don't want it Come now, on, Lord. Yep. Mary right. said, and I'm reading between the lines, Mary said, well, he's already dead. He's been uh -huh. dead four days. I'm yep. not even getting up to meet you. But we saw what Martha did. Yeah. Martha got up and ran to meet him. The Bible said Jesus wasn't even in the town where Lazarus lay because when she heard Jesus was coming, she went and met him. Yeah. Why? Because that's what the presence of the Lord meant to her. Yeah. Right. It meant something to Martha to see Jesus Christ because she knew no matter how long that Lazarus had been dead, if she could just get to Jesus and Jesus could just get to Lazarus, that he could do a miracle. Yeah. Oh, but I'm telling you that the presence of God is always on time when you feel like that there's no way, when you feel like that there's no end and you feel like that he's nowhere to be around, if you'll just hold on, I promise he's there. He may yeah. not make himself known right when That's you right. want him to, and he may not uh, make himself seen right when you want him to, but he's there with us in the presence of God. Right. The presence of God is the most important thing in our churches today. Right. See, I, I, I believe it. No man has ever truly been saved by the blood of Jesus without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Right. Right. Without the presence of the Lord, there's no, no salvation. Way. No way. Oh, no, there's no repentance without the, the Spirit of the yeah. Lord, without the presence of the Lord. Yeah. So if we think we can go on and we can do it without the Lord and without the presence of the Lord, there's no possible way we can do it. I think about them boys after Jesus was crucified, walking down that Emmaus Road, mm -hmm. yeah. walking down that road, and all of a sudden Jesus came to them. I believe in the flesh. Yeah. No, I don't believe it was his spirit. I believe it was. I believe he had the nail scars in his yeah. hand. I believe yeah. it was every bit flesh. As I'm right. standing here today, Jesus came to them, and Jesus told them boys. They were telling Jesus all about it. Why are you not sad? Have you not heard the man, the man that came to save us all, the man that that came to to wash away our sins, the man that came. He's been. He's dead. And they were looking Jesus Christ in the face and didn't even realize his presence because of what they were going through yeah, blinded them from the fact that they were in the presence of the Almighty King. Yeah. Yeah. If we're not careful, we'll allow our situations as Mary did. We'll allow our situations and our sorrows and our hurts and our pain, we'll allow that to overtake us right. to the mm -hmm. point that we won't even realize when the Spirit of God is present. Right. And we know the Spirit of God is what it takes to raise Lazarus from the dead, but she was so bound down in her own sins and her own burdens and her, in her own sorrow, she didn't realize exactly what she needed mm -hmm. was there. So we see he's always in time and on time in his presence. I'm trying to hurry this morning. We see the Lord. that he's always on time and his provision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to hurry through this Come one. On, but this is good <laughs> stuff right here. Verse number 24. Yeah. Said Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah. He's yeah. always on time in his presence. He gets yeah. there when yeah. he needs to be there. Hey, but he's always on time in his provision. That's right. When that it feels right. like when the bills are due and yeah. the money's not in the bank, and it feels like now I'm not preaching help Come and wealth, on. but I'm preaching Bible. Yes. Come when on. it feels like that the money's not there and it's just too late, if you'll hold on, his provision is right on time. How is it that I can walk over to the light switch and I can trust that when I turn that light switch off that the power is going to go off and I don't even think about it. Yeah. And when I walk over, I can flip that thing back up and I can expect that the lights are going to come you, on. Yeah. I trust in the provision of the wire from the light switch uh, outside. And I, I trust in the provision from the light switch to the lights in order to get the power where it needs to go. Right. I can trust in something as carnal as the wires in the wall, but I can't trust in 
the one that created the universe. Uh -huh. And now that's convicting to me Come now. On. I walk outside to my truck and I turn the key and I don't I don't expect it to not start. I just have faith that it's going to start. Right. Yeah. And I've driven right. some things a couple of times that I didn't know if they'd start or not, but that's beside the point. Come when on. I get to my house and I take a step on my porch, I don't think, well, I wonder if it's going to fall in. I have faith that it's going to, and that's all worldly yeah. material Come things. On. But if I can have faith in something so carnal, and I can have faith in something providing for me to walk, why can't I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that He will provide my every need according to not my will, not my riches, but according to His riches Amen. That's good. in glory. The provision of God. Hey, you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about when Jesus says, go to the flour bucket. Yeah. And I know that I just Come made on. the last bit of cake that I can make and there's no more flour in the bucket. Yeah. Come I'm on. talking about when I walk over there knowing that it's going to be empty anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about when that little lady on, in the so Bible walked over there and Jesus said, make me some bread. Yeah. And she, he, he, she walked over there knowing it was going to be empty, but there was just enough flour in the bucket. To make him a loaf of bread because that's what the master wanted. That's provision. Yeah. I'm talking about when the whole world walks out on you. And you ain't got nobody that's got your back anymore. And you feel like you're at your wit's end. I'm talking about when you walk in and you see Jesus Christ standing there. Because he made you that promise that he would never leave or forsake you. And he's providing whatever you need for your life. That's the provision of God now. We can trust in the provision of everything in the world, but we can't trust in the provision of the one that made itself. That's right. The one that made the world, it's hard for us to trust in him. Trust in his provision. Bless but he Lord. told Martha, Martha said, well, Jesus, I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection. Yeah. You already told us that, 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 that the dead in Christ shall rise, and he's dead, and he was in Christ. and I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection day, but I'm talking about right now. And Jesus said, I don't, know why, I don't know why you're talking about the resurrection day, because I am the resurrection. Amen. Hey, I'm glad he didn't Come say on. I was the resurrection. I'm glad he didn't say I will be the resurrection, because he still ain't died yet. But he said, I am the resurrection. Right. If he said I was the resurrection, we'd have to be looking back on it. If he said, I will be the resurrection, we'd have to be looking forward to it. Yeah. But he said, I am the resurrection. Which means, I was, I am, and I will be. That means past, present, future is the resurrection. That means that when times change and society changes and viewpoints changes, the Word of God never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means that He's the resurrection no matter who's president. That means He's the resurrection no matter who disagrees in Congress. That means He's the resurrection no matter what anybody says about Him. And no matter how many Oprah Winfrey's tell you that you can do what you want to get to heaven, yep. He is the resurrection, He is the way, and He is the one that will provide that hand of provision over you when you need Him the most. He is the resurrection mm -hmm. and the life. Amen. And then He said that He that believeth in me, though He were dead, yet He shall live. So He's providing, He's, he's giving them that sense that, look, even though it seems like I haven't provided for you on time, and even if it seems like that my provision is slack, and it seems <coughs> like that I haven't given you what I told you I would give you, if you'll just hang on, my provision is good enough. My provision will get you where you need to be. And think about right now, if you're listening, no matter how you're listening this morning, I want you to think about the worst time you've ever been through in your life. Think That's about it now. Lord. Everybody's different. I don't yeah. want to work on your emotions, but think about the hardest time you've ever been through in your life. Think of whatever it may be, whether it's today you may be going through it now, whether it was 15 years ago, the hardest time you've ever been through in your life, think about how tough it was. Think about what all you had to go through. And now think about where you're at today. Yeah. You say, well, what do you mean, preacher? That's good. Come on. I mean you're sitting here today because the glory of God provided and His hand of provision was over you. The hardest time you've ever been through in your life is now nothing but a memory. Right. It's nothing but something you have to look back on. And you say, well, preacher, I don't want to think about it. I don't even want, want that to go through my mind. Well, okay, I'm, I, just, I just want to make the point to you that the hardest time in your life, you've made it through so you can make it through whatever life may throw your way because God's provision will be on you. Amen. No matter what you need, right. no matter where you, what you stand in need of, the provision of God will be there. Brother Chris, I can't help but think, uh, you told me the story about your daughter over there in Honduras, is it? Yes, sir. 
Yes. And the things that they're having to go through, and, I, and when I read this story, I, I, I can't help it, that just came to my mind, that God's hand of provision will yeah. be there. And I know it's hard for us to see it, and I can't imagine you as a daddy having to, 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 to put that much faith and trust in God and that He'll take care of your daughter over there doing mission work. Uh, what is it? Pretty much nine months pregnant. I mean, any time now. She, yeah, she'll, they, she'll be having her little baby over there, her and her husband, doing mission work in Honduras and the things that they're going through. But I'm telling you that through the authority of the Word of God, God's hand of provision will be on them. Amen. God That's can right. touch them. Yep. God, will, yes. I promise you He'll give everything that He's ever said He would give because it's that hand of provision. Amen. And then lastly, I'll say this, and I'll be done and give it over to Brother Chris. But he's always on time in his presence. He's always on time in his provision. And he's always on time in his promises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can look yeah. back at verse number 23. Right when Jesus showed up, Jesus said, Thy brother shall rise again. Mm -hmm. And then it all went on a little bit, and they had some conversation and confrontation, and went back and forth a little while. And you skip all the way back down to verse number 40. And you can read what happened. Yep. Jesus made Martha a promise and said, Don't worry, Martha, your brother's going to rise again. And we see come to verse number 40 and verses 40 through 44 that they say, Don't open him up. He's going to stink. It's been four yeah. days. Come on. And their faith in Jesus is, in, in his provision and their faith in his presence and their faith in his promises were slacking and they were off. But we know that he made him a promise. And that promise stood. He said, your brother will rise again. And what happened? Lazarus rose again. Yep. Hey, I'm telling you, if God has made you a promise in your life, if God has made a promise in this book right here, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to. You don't even have to pray about it. Because if he made you a promise, it's going to stand. That's right. And people say, well, I don't know what's going to happen in the end days. Well, I do. Yeah. And I, so I'll be honest with you, some of it I don't necessarily like what's going to happen, yeah, and it sounds on. pretty scary when you get over that book of Revelation, but it's in there. John saw it, and I believe it. The yeah. Holy Ghost inspired him to write it down. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. If God made a promise, then he's going to hold true to it, and you can take it to the bank. Yes, sir. Well, you can wear it in your backpack because it's going to happen. If God's Amen. promised it, if God uh -huh. spoke it, then you ain't got to worry about it because it's going to come to pass. Do you think of the promises God's made, made us? You think about heaven. My goodness. Think about the promise God has made us that when we take our last breath on earth is when we'll be in the presence and the glory of God in heaven. Just think about that. The, the streets of gold, yeah. the walls of jasper. Think about heaven and all the loved ones that you, we've so longed to see and we, we just can't wait to get there. But when we get it on our last leg, I'm sure the devil will throw a little doubt yeah. and, and fear and maybe in our mind a little bit and say, well, you really think heaven's going to be like that? Yeah, maybe, maybe you believe there's a heaven, but there ain't no walls of, of jasper and streets of gold <laughs> on, and gates of pearls. Well, that just sounds like a fairy tale. That's the way the devil does us. But hey, I'll tell you that God promised it. Yeah. Jesus yes. said to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, in my, in my house are many mansions. I don't believe I'm going to get a little bitty room. Uh -huh. Bless God, I believe I'm getting a mansion. Right. And I'll take it. Yeah. I'll live in a little shack down here on earth and barely make it through, but I'm taking my mansion in Amen. heaven. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I don't care. You can take your little room if you want to, but I'm taking my mansion that the Lord has prepared for us. He's made us a promise. And I know he's made us a promise, so it's going to stand and it'll, 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 uh, it'll last <laughs> forever till the day of Jesus Christ. His promises will stand. He'll never leave or forsake us. He made us the promise of salvation. Yeah. Yes. So I believe if a man, through, uh, by grace through faith, I believe that a man, if he believes in Jesus Christ, he confesses with his mouth. I don't think, well, I ain't going to get into that. But anyways, I don't, want to get, I don't want to get into all that. But I believe if a man calls upon the name of the Lord, no matter who he's at, where he's at, what race he is, how much money he's got, oh, Lord. if a man calls on the name of the Lord, then I believe he'll be on the flight to heaven just yeah. as I will be Amen. and just as you will be. He don't have to be called. He don't have to be elected. But he's got to call on the one That's right. that paid it all. I believe that his salvation, the promise of salvation is perfect. The sanctification yeah. that he promised us. The forgiveness that he promised us. Heaven, the pro all these promises will be fulfilled one day. Our faith will end in sight. But his promises are right on time. You say, preacher, I'm at my wit's end. I just can't make it anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know if I can, I can go any farther. Well, I promise you that even when it seems like all hope is lost, 
As these, these folks thought that it was done for four days, they sat around and mourned. Even Jesus himself wept because the sorrows and the hurt and the pain of others around right. him burdened his heart. And I believe when we'll call out to him and when we'll put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, his presence is right on time, his provision is right on time, and his promises are right on time. I'm going to get Samantha to play a song for us right now. Listen to the words of this song and let the Lord minister to your heart. I pray that, that somebody got some encouragement, maybe some conviction. Maybe the Lord spoke to somebody about it's going to be all right. Yes. Because no matter how hopeless you may seem and no matter how you feel like you can't go any farther and you're at the end of your road, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, He is an on-time God. We don't serve a Buddha that's dead. Oh, oh no, we don't serve a Baal that's dead. We don't sell, serve a Muhammad Come that's on. dead and laid in the grave. Yep. But we serve a Jesus Christ. You can go to Joseph's tomb and it's empty. Why? Because Jesus rose again. Exactly. He fully died. Right. He fully rose again. And bless God, He's fully coming back. But we can hold to His promises because He's always on time. Listen to this song and Brother Chris will come afterwards.
tried to free me in my Facebook the other day. He said if he had all 5,000 friends, he couldn't, couldn't send nobody else. I mean, he asked me about that last night and I forgot it. Amen. Thank you, Samantha, for playing that for Brother Philip. Uh, and this is Brother Larry Gray. We're just kind of putting both broadcasts together tonight or this morning. And as I went into the uh, church this one night, I don't remember, I think it was Wednesday night when Brother Chris was with us at church. And it looked like when I walked through the door, Brother Chris was standing there in the foyer waiting on me, kind of sort of the way it looked. And boy, the Lord just spoke to me real quick, all of this, this almost instantaneously. And I asked Brother Chris to come today and, and uh, preach on my broadcast. And so uh, I'm not going to take you a lot of time, but I ask you to pray for me tomorrow. Brother Philip was talking about where he was going to be. Lord willing, I, I will be going to uh, Macedonia uh, Baptist Church in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee tomorrow uh, to preach. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. Just like Brother Philip said, the Lord really dealt with me this week about it. And I uh, had some scripture on my mind, and, and one night in Brother uh, in Dr. Uh, Sizemore's message, he gave me a thought to go along with the scripture. And if you don't change my mind, I'm going to be talking and preaching about, uh, are you on the right side? So uh, that's what the Lord seems to be uh, leading and putting on our hearts. So uh, pray, for, pray about that and pray for that. Continue to pray for Brother Chris and the work that he does. And without any further ado, we're going to turn it over to Brother Chris win and let him hammer down the sharp. Man, thank you, Brother Larry. It's a uh, great joy to be here today, and I appreciate these guys being here, and thank you for the invitation. I uh, just couldn't help but think on the drive here this morning. It was in April, I think, uh, 1987, uh, that I started preaching some on the radio, and uh, me and a couple of preacher buddies of mine, we preach every uh, three weeks, and then but it's probably been 25, 26 years ago now uh, since I've had the privilege <coughs> and the opportunity of preaching on the radio. And I yeah. loved it when I was doing it, and uh, God blessed and gave us a good start uh, there. I've got one verse that I want to read today uh, for sake of time, and it's found in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 7. I'd encourage you to read this chapter when you have time today if you're there at home and have your Bibles, and if you're driving down the road in the car listening today, I encourage you sometime uh, to take a copy of the Word of God and read First Peter, and especially chapter number 5. Yeah. I'll refer to some of the other verses in the message today, uh, but verse number 5, and I couldn't help, or verse 7 out of First uh, Peter 5, I couldn't help but to think that, uh, uh, you know, God's put this together. I yeah had no intentions Bless of him, preaching this at all until I started driving here today. And I had another thought in my mind since the time that Brother Larry had asked me, and I thought I'd be going that direction and got in a truck <laughs> headed here uh, from the house, and uh, the Lord just kind of brought this passage to mind, and then uh, Philip confirmed it with his message. Amen. It was just a, a great introduction, what, what it kind a of great together, sermon, man. but really an introduction to what I'm uh, fixing to preach to you now. Uh, uh, Philip had preached about he's an on-time God, and I thank God he is an on-time yeah, God. Exactly. He's, right, he did. he's proved that over and yeah. over in my life, uh, down through the years, my family and in my ministry. He preached about how he's on time with his presence. I've yeah. never been anywhere uh, mm -hmm. where he forsook me. Uh -huh. He's always yeah. been no. with me yeah. in every yeah. valley, uh, every storm, every trial. Uh, God's always been there, Amen. and what a true statement that is, and in His him, uh, provision, there's yeah. been times that I was trying my best to figure out how in the world mm -hmm. we were going to make it, or yeah. how in the world right. God was going to uh, provide so-and-so, yeah. and just thought, you know, I, I I could do this, I could do that, I could put it on a credit card, yeah. or, you know, try to figure out every way All I right. could go ask somebody or something, and then God just... Uh, show up on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. what yeah. uh, what hey, we man. needed. And, Bless his heart. Uh, it's true. He is an on time God with yeah. His presence, His provision, and then 
uh, his promise. And Amen. thank God yeah. for the promises of God. I, yeah. uh, there's not a promise that he made in this blessed old book yeah. uh, that hadn't been fulfilled or yeah. that hadn't right. been fulfilled. Yeah, right. I, I believe, I believe every it. promise in this book. I and believe it. Time and time again we've seen God uh, fulfill his promises yeah. in our life. Now First Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 7 very simple verse, very familiar verse. It says, casting all your care upon <laughs> yeah. him, for he cares for you. Yeah. I certainly am glad today to hey, know a God yeah. that yeah. Cares, cares, uh, for yeah, cares for me. Right. We come to this book, First Peter, and I, I'm glad that this book is in the Bible. I mm. I thank God for First and Second <laughs> yeah. Peter. Hey, I thought about. Have you ever thought about the instrument that God used to uh, pen this book. If you remember uh, the night before his crucifixion, uh, the writer of this book was warming himself uh, by a fire. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's a little damsel, a little girl that said, well, you're one of them. And he said, no, I'm not. Yeah. And uh, then another one said, well, you're with them. And he said, no, I, I, I'm not. And someone else said, uh, yes, you're you're part of that crowd. Yeah. And he yeah. uh, denied it three times, and he used a profanity. Well, yeah. uh, that guy, his name is Simon uh, Peter. Peter. Yeah, I, come on. I thought about it on the way down here today. I thought, well, thank God. Uh, he's a God of a second chance. Yeah. I'm glad that our uh, failures are not final uh, with the Father. Yeah. I'm Amen. glad that... He used Let's Peter again. Well, uh, you know the story. Peter went out from there and he uh, uh, wept bitterly uh, and he repented and uh, God used him to preach on the yeah. day of Pentecost. Yeah. He uh, delivered that first sermon uh, when the Holy Spirit of God fell and some uh, 3,000 souls were saved. Yeah. And then, uh, just a few days <laughs> later, 5,000. Yeah. Then a few days later, 2,000. <laughs> it was a matter of just days that uh, the church went from those 120 uh, that were scared to death, uh, gathered together, hiding, uh -huh. uh, praying in the upper room, uh, to over 10,000. Yeah. And, and he <laughs> Use the guy uh, that had sinned hey, and failed, hey, but hey, uh, thank Come God on. he's a hey, God hey, of a second chance. Hey, and, hey, uh, you know, hey, the reason hey, that uh, Peter, I, I didn't, wouldn't even plan on saying that. This yeah, was, uh, the reason good. that Peter uh, got to where uh, he did what he did, uh, the Bible says that he followed afar uh -huh. off. Yeah. Uh, that was his problem. That's the problem with uh, the church today, yeah. Yeah. is that a lot of us are uh, seeing how yeah. far a uh, way that we can get and right, still be right. in the wow. presence that, of God, yeah, uh, still be on, in the uh, provisions yeah, of God, uh, still be in the promises <laughs> of God. Amen. I have people all the time, I say, preacher, is it a sin for me to do so and so? Is it a sin to do? And, and my answer is usually this. If you've got to ask somebody, it uh, then it's probably wrong. <laughs> right. uh, but see, today, yeah, uh, we're, wanting, uh, uh, we're wanting several. Uh, we want to see how uh, far away that we can get from God, yep. but yet still uh, have His provisions yeah. and His uh, right. Folks, I think we ought to just Forget get up at the table. Amen. Uh, yeah. uh, just get as close as we can yeah. uh, to Him. Uh, thank God He used uh, Peter to preach the thousands. Mm -hmm. He used Peter to pastor the first church yeah. in Jerusalem. Yeah. He used Peter to pen of the words that you and I have just read uh, this morning. Thank God uh, for that. Well, I cast all your care upon him, uh, for he careth uh, for you. Yeah. Uh, when he was writing this epistle, uh, there was a wicked ruler uh, that was on the throne in uh, Rome. He was Nero. He was one of the most uh, wicked men uh, that's ever uh, sat on the throne. Uh, there's a saying that says that uh, he played the fiddle when Rome burned. That Nero uh, played the fiddle when Rome burned. It's believed that Nero himself is the one who set fire uh, to Rome and he celebrated it, but yet he 
turned around uh, and he accused the Christians uh -huh. of uh, doing that. Yeah. Our enemy loves uh, to do yeah, things yeah, to right. us and then yeah, accuse right. us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but thank God there's a God on the throne hey, uh, that's Come omniscient, on, uh, that's yeah. all knowing, <laughs> uh, that knows all things. Hey, and man. he's yeah. uh, uh, never left us. He'll never yeah, forsake right. us. Right. And he is providing for us. Hey, I, hey, I, hey. I thought about the words of the old uh, Fanny Crosby song. It says, uh, draw me nearer. Uh -huh. I said, I am thine, O Lord. I've heard thy voice, and it told of thy love uh, to me. Uh, for I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer uh, drawn to thee. Yeah. Uh, draw me nearer, uh, nearer, yeah. blessed Lord, uh, to the cross uh, where thou hast died. Yeah. Uh, draw me nearer, uh, nearer, uh, nearer, blessed Lord, uh, to thy precious uh, bleeding uh, side. Yeah. Well, uh, we are in a time of uh, trouble, in a time of yeah, cares, and a time of darkness. We're mm -hmm. living in uh, dark days and uh, sorrow yeah. on every hand. Uh, the whole world, it seems, has just uh, rejected God and mm -hmm. the uh, things of God. And I, Christians everywhere I know are going through uh, hard times. Well, uh, Peter gives us three things that I think will help us to walk closer yeah. uh, to the Lord. Uh, number one, he deals with our attitude towards God. I want you to see that. Uh, verse 5, if you are there at home and you have your Bibles where you can look at that, if you're driving down the road, uh, you listen. He says, you're younger. Uh, said, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you uh, be subject one to another. Then look at, listen at verse 6. Uh -huh. He says, humble yourselves, uh, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. We're going to get close mm. to God. We've got to have the right attitude. Yeah, right. He's dealing with us. Yeah, right. I, he's dealing, well, you know, all of this is in uh, uh, in light of verse 4, where it tells us that the chief shepherd is coming again. And, and, and because of that, uh -huh. because the chief shepherd's coming, uh, we need to cast our burdens on the yeah, Lord. Right. Uh, we need to let him handle our burdens. He tells us uh, to have the right attitude to humble ourselves up under the hand of God. I, I've never seen so much pride in all of my life. Man, the reason we're, uh, we can't have revival yeah. uh -huh. uh, and uh, to come come go preacher. back to come church on. today yeah. Yeah. it's come because on, of the pride right, sitting right. in the pews. We, uh, we're too prideful yeah. to admit yeah. that we yeah. need God. Yeah. Uh, we're too prideful <laughs> to get up and <laughs> repent <laughs> of our <laughs> sin. Uh, pride will separate us from, the, uh, from God. Uh, pride will get us to thinking that we don't need God. Uh -huh. uh, pride is uh, going through life without Him. Uh, pride is uh, living our life without acknowledging uh, the need for God. Uh, pride is going day to day without uh, talking to Him and thanking Him. Uh, pride is sitting down at a meal at a table and eating without bowing our heads and uh, thanking the Lord that's provided. Uh, pride is looking at all of our uh, stuff that we've got, the cars we drive, the house we live in, the clothes we wear, and somehow think that we've done that ourselves. I'm telling you men, I don't have anything that God's not given me. Amen. I humble right. myself Amen. before Him yeah. and know that everything I've got, Amen. everything that yes. I, yes. I, 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 I use in this whole world, He's given to me. But it's yeah. stinking pride that'll make us it think is. that we've done yes. it ourselves. Yeah. We deserve it ourselves. <laughs> we've earned That's it ourselves. Look at verse 5. The last part, He says, For God resists the proud, but He gives grace to oh, the humble. Yeah, yeah. I'm Amen. telling you, you don't want God's hand of resistance upon you. Uh -huh. But if you're living a prideful life, then that's where you're at. Uh, number one, he deals with our attitude. Uh, number two, he deals with our necessity uh, for God. Verse 8 says, uh, be sober, uh, be vigilant, because your adversary of uh, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Mm. You may not understand it today. You may not know it today, but we have an enemy, yeah, but, and his yeah. name is Satan. Mm -hmm. He's not our friend. He is our foe. He's not our advocate. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, he's not our advocate, but he is our adversary. He's not for us, but he is against yeah, us. Right. And Satan wants to do everything he can to yeah. harass us, yeah, uh, to hinder us. 
He's as a roaring lion uh -huh. seeking whom he may devour. That word devour, I've done a word study one time, Philip. That word devour means to drink down. Mm. It means to swallow. It means to consume. Mm. It means to wipe out. Yeah. Uh, Satan wants to wipe us out. Yeah, Satan wants to consume us. Bless he wants to destroy yeah. us. He wants to devour your life. Yeah. He wants to devour your marriage. Yeah. He wants to devour your children. Yeah. He wants to devour your church. Yeah. He wants to consume and take away your testimony. He wants to take away your peace. Yeah. To take away your joy. But thank God, we serve a God yeah. that's bigger Amen. than our Amen. 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 Yes. That's right. Thank None of us in our own strength and in our own power is a match for our enemy, uh, Satan. Breaks my heart to see what Satan is doing to some people. I, mm. Not long ago, I was flipping through Facebook and on a pastor friend's page of mine. It's back around Christmas, just a few days ago, actually. And the family, his family was there. And I looked, he's got daughters. And one of those I, I did not recognize. I wouldn't have known her. If I'd have met her somewhere on the street, I know this family well. But if I'd have met her at one time, she is a very pretty girl, very beautiful girl, but I looked at that picture, I, I blew it up where I could get a closer look, and I just began to see what all Satan's done to her, wow. uh, through drugs and yeah. uh, crystal meth, how that, that young, beautiful uh, girl at one time, that she's aged some 20, uh, 30 years, and uh, the, the, it was just, I, I, I wept. Wow, and I, I, it broke Lord. my heart. Yeah. We look around and we see many that uh, Satan has done that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but look at this. The, our verse today uh, says, cast all your care. Yeah. There's a lot of mamas and daddies that's hurting over yeah. their on, uh, sons or their daughters. They've got yeah. uh, care, cast all uh, your care upon right. the Lord right. uh, for he cares for you. Uh -huh. He deals with our attitude towards God. He deals with our necessity for God. Uh, thirdly, he deals with our dependence upon God. I, mm -hmm. I, we have to depend upon God. Yeah, we're right. we we're going to see that verse 4 where it talks about the chief shepherd coming. He's going to appear. If we're going to have to see him appear, we must depend fully upon God. Yeah. I want you to focus on that verse just for the few minutes that we've got left. He says, casting your care upon him, for he careth for you. Mm. There's two cares in that verse. He says, casting your care upon him. Yeah. That first care is my care. It's your care. Yeah. It's the care of the world. Yeah. That word literally, in the original Greek, it means burden. Mm. It means trouble. Yeah. It means trial. It's literally that which brings fear uh, into our life. That second care there where it says he careth. That word careth there. That word care. That Jesus is using. It's a completely different word yeah. than that first word. Uh -huh. It means affection. Yeah. It means love. Thank God. It means concern. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, it Thank means a desire <laughs> yeah. to help a one in need. In contrast, he says, our burdens, our fears, our worries, yeah. our troubles, our trials. Oh my goodness. And they're contrast wow. to his love, yeah. to his compassion. <laughs> To his hope, Thank you, to his peace, <clears throat> to his victory, to his desire. I believe that there's many today that you may be listening by way of radio that you're stuck in the middle of that first care. Yeah. Uh -huh. The cares of this world, the cares of life, the trials, the burdens, yeah. the heavy load has weighed you down. But it's my prayer that you get to that second care yeah. of this first. Yeah. Amen. That Amen. you get close to him, to his love. <laughs> To his peace, to his yeah. strength, to his power, to his joy, to his victory. Mm. You say, preacher, what about my fears? He cares for you. Yeah, yeah, you say, what about my hang-ups? He cares for you. Uh -huh. You say, what about my burdens? <laughs> he cares for you. Yeah. What about my Lord. troubles? Thank, Thank God, Lord, Richard. today, <laughs> on, Richard. he's there on the throne, and he knows and yeah, he cares he yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Something that needs to happen to tell you in the life of yeah. many of us. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. That's it. We're to, we're to swap our cares for his care. Yeah. <laughs> we're to make that That'll transaction. Preach, yeah. Yeah. Swap your burden for yeah. your blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, swap your fear for faith. Uh, swap your defeat for victory. Swap mm -hmm. your crying for yeah. 
His compassion oh, and His love. Yeah. That verse again, He says, that first word tells us how to make that swap. Yeah. Yeah. It tells us how to make that transaction. He says, cast. Cast all, not some of them, but all, A-double-L. I remember in this morning that Thinking about that word cast, my when I was a little boy, my daddy gave me the my very first rod and reel, zip yeah. code thirty three. Mm. <laughs> I think every little boy, every little girl yeah. needs a zip code thirty three. That's, right. That's good. <laughs> and over the years, I've had people to give me some fancy reels, some high dollar reels, and uh, some for bass fishing or different things. But man, my favorite one still is zip code thirty three. That's right. Yeah. It's an all-purpose reel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can catch a bluegill on it. Yeah. You can catch a brim on it. You can catch crappie on it. You can catch a catfish. You can yeah. catch a bat. Yeah. I believe you can catch Moby Dick on a 733. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. When we're used to casting. We know that fishing analogy. We cast and we reel. We cast and we reel. We cast and we reel. Till we catch something on the other side. Mm. That's the way we do our burdens many oh, times. Yeah. Oh, wow. We cast them, but oh, we reel them back in. Right. We go to the altar wow. and we'll cast them, yeah, but we get right. up and we reel them back in. Yeah, we'll Lord. pray in the morning yeah, before we right. leave the yeah, house yeah. and we'll cast our cares upon right. him, yeah. but we reel them back in yeah. and we carry that oh, burden throughout Come the on, day. Preacher. We lay down yeah. at night and we'll cast our burdens and then we'll put our head on the pillow and then we'll worry all night long and can't sleep because of the burdens. I'm telling you, we've got a God yeah. that wants us to cast and not real. A cast and I just let him have it. A cast and let him take care of it. I thank God that he's a God on the throne yeah, that can take care of every burden that we have. Amen. Yes, That's good. Amen. There's a song we used to sing. It says, when your enemies assail and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. <laughs> he'll make a way for you and he'll lead you safely through. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and lead it there. Amen. If you trust and never doubt, mm. he'll surely bring you out. Yeah. <laughs> Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Yeah. He says, cast all of our care in light. Listen, that verse 4, it says, When the chief shepherd shall appear, and ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Mm. That chief shepherd's coming. Yeah, yeah, he is. In these last days before he comes, they're dark days, they're troubling days, mm. they're days full of sorrow, they're days full of trouble. Yeah. Thank God, Philip, as you preached a while ago, he's an on-time God. Amen. Right? He's on yeah. time with his presence. Every time. He's on time with his provision. Uh -huh. yeah. He's on time with his promises. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. No, he's not. He's not going to let the enemy have us. Oh, no. We just come to him and cast. Yeah. That word cast. cast it away. Man, when you do a word study on it. It literally means to hurl it. Yeah, throw it away. It means to sling it. Yeah, sling it. It means to. I'm. I'm talking about flat getting it out of your hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's something about us. Listen, it's that pride. Mm. We want to hang on to a little of it. Mm. We think we can work it out ourselves. Yeah, forgive us, Lord. We think we can handle it. Mm. But I'm telling you, dear friend, we've got a God in heaven. Yeah, we do. He knows everything. You say, if he knows about it, won't he just take care of it? <laughs> he, he knows about he's it. On it. He says, he's wanting you. <laughs> he's <laughs> wanting you Amen. to cast it. Yeah. He's wanting you to come humbly before him and say, Father, this thing's too big for me. I can't handle it. I can't do it. I'm casting it yeah. upon you. Amen. Amen. Cast all your care, all your care. For he careth for Amen. you. Brother Amen, Larry, brother. thank you so much for allowing me thank to come. Thank you for the message. And I'm going to turn it over to you uh, and you come this us us in prayer. Go ahead, Samantha. Or whatever. Amen. Amen. And that was the Pine Ridge Baptist Church broadcast and the Larry Gray broadcast. On top of you. That was good. Just went down. You can ask Brother Philip.